Today I'm going to talk about filters in photography and which ones I recommend. There are many filters in photography, from the ones that screw onto the front of your lenses, magnetic ones that click on really quickly, right through to ones that use special brackets so you can slide them down in front of your lens. I'm going to show you each of them, what they do, and how they will change your photos. The first one I'm going to show you is the UV filter. This is a clear filter and it's meant to cut out ultraviolet light. If you've ever been into a shop to buy a lens, they will usually try to sell you a UV filter to go with your new lens. But I'm not sure it's such a good purchase. UV filters used to be practical for film cameras as a lot of film stock is sensitive to UV light. I remember I had one for my EOS 5 film camera back in the 90s, but nowadays digital sensors can cope with UV light a lot better. Now I understand the principle of having one to protect your front element, but nowadays these front elements are pretty robust and can withstand quite a bit of weather we normally take them out in, without getting damaged. And as most of us photographers are pretty precious about our kit, it is in safe hands. Well, most of the time anyway. Also, if you have a lens hood on the camera, this will offer a bit of protection. I've dropped a lens before and the lens hood broke, but the lens didn't. One thing I don't like about UV filters is that it's another piece of glass in between your subject and your sensor. And this really doesn't have to be there, especially the really cheap ones that are available online. So in most circumstances, I don't use one. The one lens I do use them with when the weather is really bad or if I'm out in the desert when it's really windy is the Tamron 17 to 28 millimeter. This has a groove around the front element that is the perfect place for dust, sand and dirt to catch. So I don't take any chances with this, especially in the desert. Now an ND filter is a neutral density filter. This means it should be neutral in the color cast and will have a different density depending on what filter you get, or basically will cut out a certain amount of light from getting to your sensor. The perfect analogy for this is that it's like a pair of sunglasses for your camera. Now I really do like fixed ND filters and have a whole host of them for my camera. They can do anything from letting you open up the aperture in the middle of the day whilst controlling your shutter speed. They can get rid of people in your travel photos and they can also slow down your shutter speed enough to blur any kind of movement in your shots. They come in varying strengths from a one stop filter right through to a 15 stop filter and beyond. A one stop filter will reduce your shutter speed by one stop of light. So for example, if you have a shutter speed of one one thousandth of a second, you'll cut it down to one five hundredth of a second. So halving the amount of light. A 10 stop filter will reduce it from one one thousandth of a second to one second. And a 15 stop filter will reduce it from one one thousandth of a second to 30 seconds. So having a range of these is well worth it and you can really do so much with them. I have a three stop, a four stop, a six stop and a 10 stop ND filter. And these give me everything that I need. Now the more expensive ones tend to be closer to having a neutral color, whereas the cheaper ones sometimes produce a bit of a color cast and it can be really hard to remove when you're editing your photos. Now, if you haven't seen it already, check out Mac Ranger's test that he did on 10 stop ND filters. I've got a link in the eye in the corner and in the description. He had around about 15 different NDs, so it's well worth watching. I have the magnetic filters from Freewell and they're pretty good value for money and really quick to use as well. They're kind of middle of the range cost wise and are as neutral as I've seen, especially with their 10 stop ND filters but there are many other reputable brands out there. I definitely recommend getting at least a couple of ND filters and I'd start off with say a four stop and a 10 stop ND filter. A graduated filter is a filter that has half clear glass and half darkened. So you can see on this one, the bottom half is clear and the top half has the ND in it. Now these are slightly more specialized filters and are great when you have a straight horizon and a bright sky. In this example, I have the sun setting and if I was to just take a photo of this scene without the filter, the sky would be overexposed or the ground would be underexposed. With a graduated filter, they normally work best in these filter brackets. Once you have framed up your shot, you can slide the filter into place and drop the exposure of the sky. You can get the border between the clear glass and the ND piece of glass exactly where you want it in your frame. 
and that's where these brackets really come in handy. This will give you a better overall exposure, bringing the sky and the land closer together and within the dynamic range of your camera. If you're not sure what dynamic range is, click on the eye in the corner or the link in the description to my quick video on that subject. Now these grad filters are great when the horizon is flat, but when something does protrude into the sky or when you're in the mountains and the line between the darker and the brighter parts of your image aren't flat, you'll run into problems. Also, if you are going to get these, I'd recommend the bracketed ones over the screw-on ones, as with the bracketed ones, you can put the horizon exactly where you want. The next filter I'm gonna talk about is the polarizer. And this is a filter that will restrict the amount of polarized light coming into your camera. They normally rotate, and so you can change the intensity of this filter. I've done a video on these already, so if you haven't seen it yet, click on the eye in the corner or the link in the description. It can create more saturated colors in your photos. It can deepen the blues in the sky, as well as reducing the amount of light reflected from shiny surfaces. If we look at these leaves, you can see them with and without a polarizer. You can also use them when photographing through glass. If there is a bit of glare on that glass, Normally a polarizer will get rid of this. Generally, a polarizing filter works best at 90 degrees to the direction of the sun rays. It is one of those filters where you do need to be a little bit picky about when you use it. But when you get the hang of it, it's really good filter and I do recommend getting one. A variable ND filter does the same as a normal fixed ND and the only difference is that when you rotate it, it darkens or lightens the shot. So I have these two different ones. I have this one from Tiffin and these ones from Freewell. The Tiffin is good from about one to five stops, but does have a slightly blue color cast. Also, it doesn't have hard stops. And if you go beyond five stops, you'll tend to get this X pattern appearing in your shots and it does make them unusable. Now, if you see companies claiming that their ND filters don't have this X pattern, be very wary of them unless they have the hard stop like these Freewell ones or the Peter McKinnon Polar Pro Variable NDs. You can see with this one, as I turn it, it stops me from turning it too far. So this means it won't go into that bit of polarization where you get that X pattern in your images. The two pieces of glass in a variable ND are polarized, and when you do rotate them, it reduces or increases the amount of light, depending on which way you do rotate them. So with these, you will get a bit of a color shift due to this polarization. Now the benefits of a variable ND are that you only have to have two filters, and you can cover most bases. With this set from Freewell, I can cover anything from a two stop to a nine stop reduction. Now I don't recommend getting ones without hard stops as it's so easy to go into that X pattern, especially when you're rushing around trying to get that shot really quickly. If you are a photographer, I'd still recommend getting fixed ND filters over the variable ones as you're only shooting through one piece of glass. Now, if you're a videographer, variable ND filters are great and you can keep your shutter down following that 180 degree shutter rule. You can also use it to have a wide aperture in the middle of the day to get that shallow depth of field look. And more importantly, you can adjust them subtly as the exposure changes whilst you're filming. Now there are things like starburst filters and colored filters, but these seem a little bit gimmicky. So the filter list that I've just gone through are the only ones that I'd recommend for photography and videography. Now, one last thing, you will need a place to put them all. Most companies do supply them with individual cases, but if you have these in your bag, they'll rattle around and they'll quickly take up space. So I'd recommend getting a pouch of some kind. Now I have this third party pouch and it's perfect for me. I can slot all of my filters in there and I can access them really quickly and these are nice, soft, padded pouches. If you want to get one of these, I've linked it in the description below. Now, do you think I've missed any out or are there any other filters you think that I could benefit from? Let me know in the comments below. It'd be great to hear your thoughts. And if you like this video, try this video next. It's Mac Ranger's massive ND filter test. If you've seen it, check out my waterfall video down here. And if you haven't already, remember to subscribe to my channel for weekly tutorials on photography. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.